Good evening and welcome to the November 2nd, 2023 meeting of the Economic Development Committee of the Fitchburg City Council. I now call this meeting to order. Please be advised that FATV is conducting an audio and video recording of this meeting for public broadcast. I ask that anyone else in the audience who is recording this meeting to please identify themselves for the record now by standing and stating their city of residence. Seeing none, at this time I ask all electronic devices to be placed in silent mode. I invite anyone in the audience who wishes to speak on any item in the agenda to please approach the podium, identify yourself by name and address, and identify the agenda item on which you wish to speak. Then you may speak on it for no more than two minutes. All right, seeing none, we'll move on to our agenda. Tonight we have a single item on our agenda. Uh, Mary Jo Bohart, the city's economic development director, will provide an update on a recently completed downtown Fitchburg consumer market analysis report. And so I will invite uh, Ms. Bohart to come to the, the lectern and, and give her presentation. And I'll ask um, uh, council members in attendance that we'll just hold our questions till she's finished. Then we'll have a, a period where we can ask questions and talk everything over. All right, Ms. Bohart. Thank you. One moment, I just wanna make sure I'm on mute. There we go, okay. Um, so, so it's a pleasure, uh, this opportunity to report out on a study that has been completed recently, but it began in the winter this past year, so kind of December into January, and it, and it was an active project for several months. It was funded through a grant from what was at the time the state agency, Department of Housing and Community Development. We used to call it DHCD. It is now the Department of Housing and Livable Communities, um, and it's under their downtown um, Massachusetts Downtown Initiative, or MDI, project. So we've been calling it a consumer market analysis of downtown Fitchburg. Uh, the proper full name of the report that uh, resulted from the work is Exploring Market Potential for Businesses in Downtown Fitchburg. The reason that we felt it was so important to do this type of a study um, was in part because we are very active in our downtown revitalization. There's a steady stream of prospective new businesses considering locating in our downtown, and uh, several of them have opened up just in the past year. Also, we have a lot of existing businesses, and we, we want to make sure that all of them, both the longtime businesses and the newer arrivals, or even those that are thinking about settling in our community, in our downtown district, can do so and thrive. And so what we wanted to do was gain insights, sort of a, a fresh snapshot uh, as to the consumer market that could support uh, the businesses in our downtown. And we went into this project not knowing uh, would it be the downtown and just the immediate surrounding area? Is it the entire city? How about some of the communities that surround us? And has the pandemic changed? consumer behavior, so there was a lot of uh, curiosities that we wanted to hopefully get a better understanding of. So I just wanted to give you that kind of frame of reference of how this study came to be. Um, and the scope of work, just to give you a little bit of a sense of that, um, it was uh, market research, I would call it post-pandemic market research. It was in the form of interviews, surveys, uh, data analysis, and um, sort of a combination of all of those things, even a focus group, um, and it was to identify and quantify market potential for establishments downtown. So that was a kind of a broad, what we were hoping to, to learn, um, and uh, part of what that involved was analyzing demographics of our city itself, and then some of the, the, the target markets within our city, um, expenditure data, uh, sales data, um, as I said, surveys and interviews, and then also researching information just about consumer habits in general. So that's kind of the project overview. Um, the approach that the consultant, and I, one more thing I should add, is we were paired with a really talented economic analysis consultant who had worked with multiple Massachusetts municipalities. Uh, the, the consulting firm was Fine Point Associates. The, uh, the, the uh, principal of that firm was Peg Berenger. And so throughout Massachusetts, 
many municipal uh, downtowns have uh, received uh, technical support through Peg Berenger over the years, and we were very fortunate that all that wisdom that she has was brought to bear in Fitchburg. So when I speak of uh, the consultant, that, that's who we are speaking of. Um, and the approach was at first to determine market segments. And we learned an awful lot from the consultant about segmenting our market and understanding, uh, and uh, when we think of a territory, who's in it and what are the different component types of consumers that are in it. And, and also trade area, and these are terms of art, but we were learning a little bit more about it. And so when the consultant was saying trade area, um, we needed to define a primary trade area for our downtown and probably a secondary trade area and possibly even something further yet. Um, and so with a lot of discussion amongst a number of downtown business owners and local residents as a part of a early stage discussion group, we narrowed down what we felt was the most appropriate target area primary uh, for uh, downtown Fitchburg, and we felt that was the city in its entirety. We really did. Um, the city, as most of you know, has approximately 42,000 residents currently. I think the 20, 20 census was 42 to 19, so in that kind of ballpark. The median household income, $65,172. And then also we have a growing Hispanic population that would be one of our uh, emerging uh, demographic sectors. It had been in the 20th percentile and now it's about 33%. So that's a significant component of our overall demographics and that's something that could be a real opportunity for us. And so we wanted to keep that in mind. Um, as far as, so, so the residents of Fitchburg as our primary target area. Uh, we also thought about uh, market segments such as Fitchburg State University. And the university, of course, is made up of students and also faculty staff. It's approximately 6,800 students um, annually and then about 615 staff. So when you put the two together, it's, it's over 7,000 people who are in our downtown and they all represent potential to be consumers. Uh, so Fitchburg State, um, approximately 4,000 students um, reside in Fitchburg. Now, I was a little surprised by that. We've often thought of ourselves as maybe having a, somewhat of a commuter school, and some might live locally, some might come every day by car or something. But um, that was quite encouraging to see so many Fitchburg State students who have uh, either live on campus or live somewhere else in our community. So that was interesting to know. And then also... Um, 66% of the student population does not have a meal plan. So, so any notion that students will have to eat on campus because they have a meal plan um, may not be a total accurate way of thinking. And, and so students are eating at their homes, they're bringing their food with them to school, they're eating out. And once again, when it comes to dining, if 66% of students don't have a campus meal plan, a lot of them could become consumers in our downtown. Um, the FSU staff, uh, I was also pleased to see or learn that 32% of FSU staff um, reside in Fitchburg, about a third. That, that's, that's pretty amazing too. And uh, the majority of Fitchburg State students uh, three quarters um, are of the 18 to 24 year old age range. So kind of a, a younger age range as you would expect with um, a university. So anyway, that, that was a snapshot of the Fitchburg State University segment of the market. Um, another segment of the market that we uh, recognized is downtown area employees. And um, there are a few larger employers in our downtown. There's also an array of smaller businesses that are employ and organizations that are employers in our downtown. Um, approximately 35% of the downtown area employees who participated in the surveys that we did are actually Fitchburg residents. That was very interesting. And the average age of those downtown employees, once again, these are those who participated in the surveying that we did, was 45. So, so that gives you a little sense of, at least it's not uh, comprehensive, but it gives you a snapshot of downtown area employees as a segment of our consumer market. 
And then last but not least, very important, uh, visitors to, to the area. These, we sometimes, I guess, would call these tourists, visitors to area attractions. Um, we have uh, some of the most uh, visited attractions in all of North Central Mass. We were informed not long ago uh, from uh, the um, regional uh, uh, tourism bureau that's run by uh, North Central Chamber of Commerce that Fitchburg has become the top destination in North Central. And that stems from a few larger destinations that when I list them, you'll, you'll, you'll recognize, of course, of course, Great Wolf Lodge uh, attracts approximately 650,000 visitors annually. Game On is now attracting 1 million visitors annually. Weekend visits um, are probably their strongest, and on weekends, visitors are coming from anywhere from New Jersey to Maine. So it's quite a distance that they're coming from to Game On. We also have other attractions such as the Art Museum, Fitchburg Art Museum, and also cultural events that occur on campus at Fitchburg State, which draw people from um, not just our community, but the region. So there's quite a bit of you know, attractions that bring people here, but just keeping in mind that tourists, we'll call them visitors, is a very important segment of the market that we would like to target for our downtown businesses. And you're gonna hear more about that as I take you through um, what the uh, report uh, revealed. So um, back to the approach. Um, there's a quick diagram that you'll see and um, it basically is showing, uh, you'll see the city in kind of a light uh, pink tone. And that as we, as I said earlier, is the primary target area. Uh, or primary um, uh, service area, and then the secondary, and that, that was after a lot of discussion with different residents and local business owners, is um, approximately 15 minute drive from the downtown outward, but it was determined that Route 2 really becomes quite a boundary because um, not too many people would come from the south crossing Route 2 into Fitchburg for day-to-day -day needs. Instead, they would be coming for a very special destination, uh, businesses or experiences, but their day-to-day -day needs, Route 2 uh, proved uh, to be a bit more of a barrier. So, so in that sense, our secondary uh, market area um, doesn't really go much further south of Route 2. And you can imagine with our sister city, Lemonster, and the commercial that they have, people that live uh, south of Route 2 probably would not be coming to Fitchburg uh, for a very uh, basic day-to-day -day needs, unless they had a job in the downtown or something like that. So, so that gives you a sense of the thinking, the thought process. One more thing, you'll see a purple boundary, the kind of the outer uh, ring there, or, or polygon, and that was considered to be a 20-minute drive. Um, it's not clear how many people we would necessarily capture. It really depends on the business type. And if it's something that's a destination, if it's an experience, probably. If it's something that's rather day-to-day uh, -day straightforward, perhaps not. You know, so, so anyway, um, probably what's most relevant is the city itself, our primary uh, trade area. So um, what I wanna do is rather than go into great detail on everything that's in the report, because I encourage you all, if you haven't done so already, you'll certainly wanna look at it. There's quite a few interesting charts, diagrams, and so on. But what I wanna start with is a brief summary of the key findings. So I'm kind of starting with um, so what we learned from it, and then I'm gonna dig in after I tell you some of the, the key findings. I think that might be a great way to kind of get you excited about what we learned from this work. Uh, one of the key findings, downtown businesses have the opportunity to attract customers living in Fitchburg, this is the residential market area, as well as non-resident market segments. So um, we, basically what we found from the study is that there's a heck of a lot of residents and non-residents who are not yet um, regular customers of some of our downtown businesses. And in this type of economic analysis, it's often considered to be an opportunity. Um, you, you might say a missed opportunity, but we would argue that it's an opportunity yet to be capitalized upon. So anyway, when we learn this type of thing in a, in a report like this, 
it's somewhat of an aha moment. So anyway, that was uh, you know, a very important uh, kind of elementary finding. Another uh, key finding from the report was potential restaurant sales, restaurant sales, represent one of the most significant market opportunities for the downtown. And what's meant by that is that there are a variety of different business types that could capture more of these various segments of the market, but restaurants stand to gain the most. And that was something that was an eye-opener, but it also shows that the notion of a dining cluster, and this is something we've been working on for a few years, um, is actually um, right in line with this type of a notion. Um, another key finding was that Fitchburg residents are not yet frequent visitors to the downtown. That might be a little shocking. Fitchburg residents are not yet frequent visitors to the downtown. And what is meant by that, and this was based on surveys of the residents, only, and, and once again, I should explain the methods we used. We didn't survey 42,000 people. We surveyed a sizable chunk, um, so it's a representative sampling. Of those that we surveyed, only 31% acknowledged visiting the downtown once or more a week. So it's about a third, meaning we have the potential to capture the other two thirds of our local residential population. Um, the businesses uh, have uh, a lot more consumer um, capture that they could um, take advantage of. Also, of these same residents, 28% say practically never do they come to the downtown. That's a little alarming, you know, almost a third. So about a third come once a week or more, and about a third say almost never. And then the, that last third is probably a little bit, a um, little more, less than once a week, a little more than never. So, um, so we have a lot of work to do to make sure that our residential population is really dialed into what's in our downtown and thus patronizing it. Another key finding from uh, the report was regarding Fitchburg State University. Fitchburg State University's market segment, and this is a combination of students and staff, visits the downtown even less frequently than the local residents do. So if we thought the residents weren't coming as much as we'd like them to, Fitchburg State students and staff are even less. Only 17% uh, visit the district at least once a week or more, and more than 40% said they visit the district practically never. So, once again, this is an opportunity um, that we want to better capitalize on, both the residents that we were talking about just a moment ago, and also the Fitchburg State students and faculty. Because um, if we had already captured all the consumers that we could possibly imagine, there wouldn't be much left to do. Look how much further work there is to really make our businesses thrive. So that was very eye-opening. Another key finding, focusing on future marketing and promotional efforts, targeting Fitchburg State students could accelerate revitalization. That makes sense. In other words, we're working very hard on revitalization of the downtown, targeted marketing really focused on the Fitchburg state segment could really accelerate our revitalization efforts. Um, it was just nice to see that that was affirmed in uh, the analysis. Um, another finding was that an estimated 1.7 million annual visitors come to Fitchburg's major attractions annually, and that represents a largely untapped market. Cultural events and activities can be used as a way to draw all market segments and promote the habit of coming to the downtown. So, so the importance of cultural events, and uh, we often see our feel-good events in the downtown, and we may think they're events just for the sake of fun, and they are, but there's also a very important role that those cultural events in the downtown play by bringing people into the downtown even if they don't transact business at that very moment, because it's building a habit and also showing how uh, the district uh, can be um, filled with vitality. Another key finding of the report involved uh, the types of cultural programming. Um, most in demand are live music, arts festivals, and food-related events. 
Food-related events will attract the largest percentage of Fitchburg State students. So when we think of different events we have done or we're thinking of new types of events we want to do, keeping in mind that live music-oriented events, arts events, and food-related events probably are going to attract the largest number of folks, particularly Fitchburg State students. So we have to keep that in mind. Another key finding was that focused marketing and promotion efforts, oh, I'm sorry, for, forgive me, I, I am repeating myself, I skipped one. All market segments expressed considerable interest in additional entertainment and recreational options, consistent with the city's strategy to focus revitalization efforts around arts and culture. So entertainment and recreation, things to do, and during our economic development strategic work, uh, it was identified that uh, dining and nightlife, things to do, was a very important component of what we wanted to see in our downtown. And here we're seeing findings from this report that if there are added entertainment and recreation types of businesses, that would really help to focus revitalization efforts around arts and culture. Good to know. Um, and I have just a couple of more key findings and then I wanna get into a few charts that I think you're gonna find pretty interesting. So two more key findings uh, as I wrap up what the report revealed. Consumers need to feel comfortable in the downtown. The more comfortable they are, the longer they linger and the more money that they feel they, they spend on local businesses. Downtown Fitchburg has room for improvement in the following areas regarding consumer comfort. Now these, uh, these things that I'm about to read off are data points coming from the opinions, how the consumers feel. So it's real, it's based on how the, the respondents to the surveys feel about the downtown. So here's one. Appearance of buildings and storefronts and vacant or abandoned feeling. That's something that, you know, these are things that room for improvement need to be worked on. Safety or the feeling of safety, um, particularly during evening hours. Cleanliness and maintenance, which uh, is, it was intended as general upkeep. And then also public spaces, but particularly seating areas. In this case for us, the lack thereof. So those types of things, the appearance of buildings and storefronts, sort of a vacant or somewhat abandoned feeling in certain sections, safety or feeling not as safe uh, as they would like, cleanliness, maintenance, and uh, public spaces or particularly seating. Those are things that consumers identified had room for improvement in downtown Fitchburg. So that's important for us to keep in mind when we think of the work ahead and what we wanna prioritize. The last uh, key finding I wanted to, to outline was Many communities have found it necessary to have a dedicated downtown management organization with a dependable funding source to coordinate and carry out the actions um, that address the issues identified in this analysis. Sometimes it can take on the form of what's called a business improvement district or BID. Sometimes it can take on the form of what's called a parking benefits district or PBD. And there's a few other models as well. But it was helpful that the consultant who has worked in multiple downtowns throughout the Commonwealth, cities like ourselves, smaller towns, larger cities, that um, having uh, an organization specialized in the downtown focused on carrying out very specific um, initiatives, pro projects, possibly events, um, that's very important. Important. And so that was something that was emphasized as one of the uh, findings in the report. Now what I'd like to do, kind of going a little quickly, is I want to, like I said, um, I don't want to, um, I, I want to encourage you all to take a look at the full report. You'll see quite a number of charts, bar charts and things that are showing the data in a visually understandable way. But I'm going to hit on some of the highlights, the ones that I think um, probably uh, would be um, most intriguing. Um, and one of them has to do with this concept of leakage. When they speak about customer or consumer leakage, and oftentimes economic analysts will speak of it as an opportunity, even though, if it, and, and I should probably define it for everybody. So leakage would be the consumer spending here in, in our target area, and um, if 
if of the amount that's spent on, say, dining outside the home is of a particular amount, but of the amount spent by the households of Fitchburg, if only you know, half or three quarters is spent locally and 25% is spent other communities, that's a leakage. Our spending is leaking outside of Fitchburg into the surrounding areas. Even though it sounds uh, disadvantageous, and it is, it also represents an opportunity because it shows us that our consumers probably would buy those things locally if they were here. So something's missing, and when we think of what we're trying to attract, we want to kind of zero in on what is it that they're going elsewhere to spend on. And so um, restaurant sales was one of the standouts that the report identified relative to uh, leakage. And um, one thing I recall, and this is going back five years ago, when we did our economic development strategic plan, there was a sort of a good news, bad news at that point. Now, this was five years ago, and it was, you know, consumer spending on dining outside the home was something to the tune of $90 million a year for Fitchburg, which sounded quite, quite amazing. But of that, about $30 million was being spent locally, and the, and the remainder, uh, two-thirds, was being spent in other places, which was an eye-opener at that time, and it led us to really focus on nurturing a dining cluster. So that was thinking five years ago. What this particular report, um, more recent analysis, was revealing is that our leakage has reduced, but it's still there. So approximately $25 million worth of consumer spending by Fitchburg folks is occurring outside of the city. And um, so it's, it's approximately 90 million being spent on dining outside the home, so that's a good number. But of that, 25 million is being spent outside of Fitchburg. So what we tried to find through this analysis that the consultant did was, what type of dining, what type of restaurants are so different than what we have, that people are going beyond our, our city to find them. And what it revealed was sit-down, sit-down service. It, it could be fine dining, it could be casual sit-down dining, but where you sit and you're served by wait staff. That, and it may sound simple enough, but, but Fitchburg has a lot, or had, <laughs> we have a lot more sit-down now than we did uh, just a few years ago, but we had a lot of casual, I'll say grab-and-go type of eateries, and that's great, but, but our consumers sometimes wanted more of an experience, and they were going beyond Fitchburg to find it. So it was an eye-opener for us. Um, we know we're seeking to continue to grow our dining cluster. When we see some of the restaurants that have opened up, and of the ones in the downtown that have opened just since January, actually just since March, of the four that have opened, and I'll list them at the back of my slides in just a moment, of the four, three have sit-down service. So it's like, okay, so we're, we're, we're kind of working towards something that we know we need to have more of, which is good. Now, we're going to have a, a series of, I'll call them color-coded bar charts, <laughs> and it was a style of representation that the report used to, to show consumer preferences on a number of different topics. So I'm going to go through them somewhat quickly um, in the slides, but I'd encourage you to, at your own pace, when you see the full report, you'll be able to look at them even more. I haven't represented all of them in, in my presentation tonight. I'm just giving you sort of the highlights, but I think that it's very interesting. Getting back to the notion of segmenting our market, uh, as we look at satisfaction with downtown Fitchburg as a theme, it's going to be looked at in the surveying that we did, resident segment, Fitchburg state segment, employees of the downtown segment. So we have different segments of the market, and as each one was surveyed, same questions, and we'll see how they responded and so on. You'll see these color-coded kind of red, orange, yellow, green, and then dark green kind of bars, and, and then sort of a vertical black arrow or line, which is kind of representing where the majority of the responses landed. And um, if it is in the red, it is very dissatisfied with whatever topic is being asked. If it is in the dark green, it would be very satisfied, and yellow would be neutral. So you can kind of get a sense of a sliding scale when any of these tip topics are asked of the survey respondents how they felt. 
And one thing that's kind of interesting, at first we were surprised on a number, well, I'll, I'll go through just a few quickly for you, uh, but at first we thought, why, why are they, none of them are in the dark green, what does that mean? And it doesn't mean that something, it, it doesn't mean that something is terribly wrong, it just means that people are looking at our downtown as it's, as it's gently revitalizing itself. So for them to be very satisfied might be a lot for us to hope for at this moment in time. So I just wanna say that up front and let me kind of quickly go through. When you look at the resident market segment, a majority of residents happen to be dissatisfied with the selection of retail and entertainment options in the downtown. And the way that bar chart is, if you see it, it's actually the arrow is between the red and the orange. So it's somewhere between dissatisfied, working its way to very, very dissatisfied. So that's one, if we're thinking of priorities, where we put our, put our focus, that should get our attention. That should get our attention. Another topic, recreation and entertainment options. It was landing squarely in the orange zone, which would be dissatisfied. Now what that means is they want more. We don't have enough of it yet. So, so that's how you can interpret those types of things. Selection of restaurants. This one was a bit more encouraging, possibly reflecting on the ongoing work that we've been doing to grow our dining cluster, not just in the downtown, but citywide. It's in the yellow zone, which means at least it's neutral. I wish it was in the green, but it's in the yellow zone for now. It's showing some progress, so that's good. And then public transportation is squarely in the, the yellow zone, and yet we're so well served by it with having Mart, our bus service, with its hub right in our downtown, and also commuter rail. So possibly, that's more of a ridership thing. It's not so much that the service doesn't exist, but for whatever reason, public transportation is not something that people are uh, taking full advantage of yet. So, so as you, and, and once again, I kind of want to go quickly because I don't want to take too much time with them, but I was hoping to get you familiar with when you see these color-coded bar charts as we go through some of these questions, and you're going to see it with the different market segments, the way they reacted. We're still in the residential market segment. When it comes to the ability to find parking squarely in the neutral section, daytime safety squarely in the neutral section, but actually kind of close to the light green, which was, a, a, I guess I would say encouraging. They're not saying it's red. Um, it could, probably could be better, but, it, but that was slightly encouraging. The aesthetic appeal of buildings, signs, and storefronts was in the, uh, the dissatisfied, in the orange. So that means we need to keep working on that, and it's largely stemming, I would imagine, from some of the vacant properties that have not yet been activated. Um, evening safety. This, once again, just to remind you, this is the residential market. Evening safety is between orange and yellow. So that means that daytime, it's yellow practically green, but evening, almost orange. Meaning in the evening, residents don't feel safe yet. So if we were to prioritize any added police presence or something in our downtown, perhaps prioritizing it in those evening hours uh, would be uh, something that could, um, could be impactful for residents that are feeling that it's the evening time where they feel less safe. Um, pedestrian safety accommodation was squarely in the neutral or yellow, um, so, so at least it wasn't uh, red. We would like to see with the walkability and some of the physical improvements that have been done um, uh, for sidewalks and crossings and so on, particularly since the main uh, street in Boulder Drive project was completed. We'd like to see that uh, more into the green, but for now uh, it's squarely in the neutral zone. And then public spaces and seating areas, it's in the orange, meaning, and we probably know why, there really aren't many seating areas. So that, that's something that people are dissatisfied about. Um, now, same types of bar charts, same types of questions, if we switch to the Fitchburg State segment of the market, and that's a combination of the students and the faculty and staff. So same questions, um, selection of retail stores. Dissatisfied, practically very dissatisfied. So, so for whatever reason, the Fitchburg State segment is less satisfied than the residents are. So, so we have an awareness issue, we need to work harder 
through marketing and promotion, possibly events, to make sure that the Fitchburg State consumers are better aware of what is in our downtown and um, because presently they are dissatisfied, borderline very dissatisfied with the types of retail that we have. Uh, recreation and entertainment options, very similar, uh, kind of a ranking from Fitchburg State. The selection of restaurants was almost neutral, between, dissati or between dissatisfied and neutral, but that's not really reflective of what the residents felt. So once again, we probably have a marketing challenge or task to better heighten the awareness of the Fitchburg State market segment of the restaurants that do exist because uh, there, there clearly is more there than they are aware of and uh, that they are patronizing. Public transportation, they answered very similarly to the residents. Uh, in neutral, you would think that possibly uh, the university segment would uh, be a little bit more active users of public transport, but for now, they, they, they are squarely in the neutral. So maybe that's once again an opportunity to better heighten awareness of ridership and um, trying to get more engagement in uh, public transportation. Um, a few more charts related to Fitchburg State's market segment, the ability to find parking downtown, neutral, which once again, I'd love to say, I'd like to see very satisfied, but the fact that they didn't say dissatisfied in an urban downtown, oftentimes in urban downtowns, people just uh, complained about parking, where do I find parking? And the fact that they were neutral, it was, it was actually uh, somewhat relieving, but it also means we have some work to do. We want them to feel that it's satisfied or even very satisfied, because we know that downtown Fitchburg has an abundance of public parking. So is it through informational materials? Is it through awareness that um, the, the Fitchburg State segment can start to feel more uh, satisfied with that? So that's, that's work still to be done. Daytime safety, neutral. Evening safety, dissatisfied. So very similar to the residents. Um, aesthetic appeal of buildings, storefronts and signs, dissatisfied, so work to do. Um, public spaces and seating areas, um, between dissatisfied and neutral, once again, we don't have a lot of seating areas, so that's probably reflective in, in their survey responses. And then pedestrian safety accommodations was neutral. One last uh, chart related to the Fitchburg State segment was something that I, I, I wanted to show you. You'll see this similar type of chart for some of the other segments, but I just put the Fitchburg State one in these slides to kind of give you a teaser. And it had to do with recreation entertainment and arts preferences. So asking, in this case, the Fitchburg State segment, um, and it was differentiated between all of the Fitchburg State segment and then staff versus students. So you'll see a reddish tone, a, a blue tone, and then a gray tone. And the, uh, the, the blue tone is both combined, the red tone is students, the gray tone is faculty. And uh, so it's talking about live music, um, art fairs, food-related events, live theater, films, dance, and it's getting a sense of what types of recreation, entertainment, and arts preferences are most appealing to, to those segments of Fitchburg State. Also, um, would you patronize if there were additional uh, types in the downtown of uh, entertainment venues, recreation enterprises, fitness, and so on? And no surprise, uh, the students, um, uh, we're uh, very interested in recreation, and um, and uh, that's something that we knew, and also fitness. So, so that's something that should inform us when we think of recruitment of new types of ventures into the downtown if we seek to really capture that Fitchburg State consumer. Um, last section of, um, that I wanted to take you through with these bar chart sliders had to do with downtown employees, once again. Another market segment, people who work in the downtown, some might be larger employer employees, some might be small uh, businesses. Um, and so when it came to the question about selection of retail stores, they fell in the orange zone, uh, dissatisfied. Uh, recreation and entertainment options also dissatisfied. Selection of restaurants between dissatisfied and neutral, which is somewhat surprising because these are people working in the downtown. And we know that there are a fair number of restaurants in the downtown, so that might be uh, some marketing and awareness work that we need to do 
because when people work in the downtown, they can get food by not even getting in their car. Um, so, so this is a, a group we want to capture, particularly, particularly weekday lunchtime. Uh, public transportation. Maybe because these are employees of the downtown, this doesn't surprise. So this is a higher ranking than any of the other segments on public transportation, practically to light green. So between yellow and light green, that, that's showing a bit more ridership of public transportation by people who work in the downtown. And maybe that's not a surprise with the MBTA commuter rail and the uh, Mart bus hub being in our downtown. Um, daytime safety, these are the downtown employees. Neutral, ability to find parking neutral. Um, aesthetic appeal of buildings, dissatisfied. Evening safety, dissatisfied. These are similar to the two other segments. Public spaces and seating areas, between dissatisfied and neutral, and then pedestrian safety and accommodations was neutral. So I didn't want to belabor the point with those colored bar charts, but I found it to be a unique way that the consultant in the report was representing data so that we could quickly understand it and then compare those different market segments side by side, and I thought that was very helpful. Like I said, if you read the full report, you're gonna see a lot more. What I have in these slides for tonight's presentation is just a snapshot, but it, it certainly um, it gives us a sense of what the consumers are thinking and how they feel, and that can inform our actions as we try and better capture uh, those segments of the consumer market. I should add, there is a, another segment we don't have um, a survey data on, and it was the tourism, those visitors. And it's a big segment. It was not possible for us to survey those types of visitors, particularly the visitors going to Great Wolf, the visitors going to Game On. Uh, these are people that come, they go to those facilities for a few days, and then they leave. It was not something that we were able to um, work with, you know, reaching out to those people and imposing on them to, to get their input uh, because they, they come and go. Instead, when it comes to visitors, uh, we fortunately can rely on hard data uh, as far as the quantity of them. We don't quite know what's in their head, uh, but we know how many of them and where they're coming from, and that's partly through um, the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, the North Central Mass Regional Tourism Bureau. So we have a sense of where they're coming from. Our biggest challenge with those sizable amounts of tourists and visitors coming to Fitchburg is how do we capture them for businesses in our downtown? Particularly since two of our largest tourism draws are in West Fitchburg. Now, it doesn't mean it can't happen, but it probably means that wayfinding, and this was something that is mentioned in the full report, wayfinding signage in the parts of our city where some of those large destinations are, or even some uh, special types of marketing that we have, whether it's on our website or through other social media means, through our tourism bureau, making it much easier for people. Maybe they're visiting Great Wolf, maybe they're visiting Game On. Game On is a huge opportunity for us because when family members have someone in a tournament, they might have multiple games over a period of a few days, and there's a lot of downtime. And in that downtime, they could be coming and exploring um, the businesses in our, in our community. So um, it'll be a little bit more work for us to figure out how best to capture those tourism dollars, but the good news is we know that they're coming here, um, and they're coming here from uh, quite a distance beyond Fitchburg. So, um, so that's a work in progress, but I just wanted to explain why we don't have the colored bar charts for the tourist or visitor section or sector. Um, I have a few recommendations. What does this all mean, and, and what might we do with it? Uh, first thing we're going to do with it, and I didn't list it here, but we're going to be meeting with downtown businesses to share with them so that they can become familiar with what this report uh, found and, um, and hopefully um, find ways uh, that they can make the most of it in each of their respective businesses. Some of them may want to work with us um, to uh, come up with uh, marketing campaigns or, or social media campaigns or different ways uh, to promote themselves better to capture some of these uh, consumers that they might be missing. So, so we're gonna be doing that within the next few weeks, um, and then uh, that will uh, take on, um, you know, we'll see how that goes, and, and probably coming out of that, there'll be uh, needs that some of our downtown businesses have 
um, maybe it's technical assistance and that sort of thing, to make sure that they can, uh, what we want is we want them to understand the opportunity to capture more customers that's out there and then to help those that wish to have assistance that they can capture it. So that's, that's kind of one thing that we're gonna be doing. But beyond that, um, there are a few other, uh, I'll call them broad themes that would be considered recommendations or next steps. One involves that downtown management organization. Um, we, we don't know uh, quite yet uh, whether it would be uh, a business improvement district, a parking benefits district, maybe something else. But as, as the consultant in the, in the analysis had advised, many downtowns utilize something like that to take um, care of or address things that are very specific, what business owners and what commercial property owners prioritize. And this is not to say in a downtown where they have an organization like that, that the municipality would become lax in some of the basic upkeep, you know, whether it's, you know, sweeping the streets and uh, pruning the landscape and, and, and so on. Those types of things are, are foundational. This is above and beyond. And in a downtown district, usually uh, the businesses and the commercial property owners might have certain things that they feel would really um, benefit their businesses and the district overall beyond what the municipality would normally do. So launching, formally uh, figuring out what type of structure, there has been some analysis dur during Fitchburg's TDI or Transformative Development Initiative phase uh, a few years ago, looking at the different types of structures that are out there, talking, um, you know, uh, focus groups uh, with people in the downtown stakeholders, thinking of how might it work here in Fitchburg. What we haven't done yet is kind of taken the next step. And uh, keep in mind that the priorities of a downtown management organization actually come grassroots. I mean, we, we can suggest things that we think might be uh, of interest, but it has to be kind of a bottoms up approach because the businesses, the true stakeholders in the district, what is most important to them, that often comes to the forefront in a downtown management organization. So um, launching it with solid engagement of businesses and property stakeholders is going to be essential. But that's one thing that, um, that this report mentioned and we were already thinking about doing it. So I would argue that that's something that should be um, fast tracked um, in, in the year ahead. Um, the downtown coordinator role, and we've had a downtown coordinator um, for a few years, and the individual in that role has some really unique skills, particularly graphic design, web design, social media, and um, she has worked one-on-one -on -one with a few different businesses when they've asked for assistance. What we're hearing here is that there's consumers to capture, and if certain businesses either want to do it individually or maybe they want to join forces and do some uh, group promotional type things, we could utilize the skill set of our downtown coordinator to assist uh, through technical assistance in effective promotion, targeted marketing, to better capture some of those consumer segments that might be uh, missed by our downtown businesses. Another thing the downtown co coordinator has been good at, and we can even step it up even further, is devise event types and social media engagement that is aimed at FSU students or even just younger adults. Because we know people, maybe 18 to 25, 18 to 30, that is a demographic that we definitely want to have as regular consumers and customers in our downtown and the businesses in our downtown and so on. We have a little bit of it, but some of this survey data has revealed we're not capturing as much of FSU as we thought we could. And, and there are people that may not be FSU affiliated, but they're of that same age demographic. So it's important when we do events, so often we'll have uh, feel good events that are very family friendly and that's terrific. Um, but we also wanna make sure that some of the programming that's done has this particular young adult age demographic in mind because we wouldn't want to miss the opportunity to engage them in some of the, uh, the type of events in our downtown district. Um, one thing that we can also consider as a next step, pursuing additional MDI funding. So that was the same program that we used to get the funding for this study. And we recently interacted with the state um, staff person who manages the program. And we, we saw her at a different event about a week ago. And she, she mentioned the state, the Commonwealth has allocated 
about $650,000 in this program. It's doled out in small amounts. These are all capped at $25,000 grants, you know, to do a specific type of thing. But we can think about, since we're being encouraged uh, to apply for more, what, what might that be? So two thoughts, these are just thoughts, maybe there's some other ideas. Technical assistance or support towards the launch of that downtown management organization, possibly including the prioritization of the district's needs by business stakeholders, or a, a number of the other communities that have done MDI grants, that's what they had used it for. So it's something to think about. Another idea, and this had come up recently, um, just talking amongst some different folks in the downtown, just over the last couple of weeks, financial analysis that could quantify the economic effects of arts and culture in our downtown. We know that arts and culture is having a positive effect on our downtown, but we haven't been able to quantify it. And that might be something uh, if we were able to commission a study, possibly through some MDI funding, that could really um, open our eyes to um, arts and culture and what it's doing. Uh, arts and culture and what it's no doing. Sorry, there's a bit of an echo. I'm, I'm almost finished. Um, two last things to keep in mind, very important. There is a brand new bit of legislation being considered um, uh, by the House and the Senate in Massachusetts. It's called the Downtown Vitality Act. It's House Bill 228 and Senate Bill 130. Um, just a few days back, they had a, a joint uh, session to discuss. Um, it basically would take 5% of the state's sales tax revenue from online sales and create a downtown vitality fund with that money. And out of that downtown vitality fund, Grants would be given to downtown management organizations or cultural districts to address their priorities. So uh, this is something that would not just be for gateway cities, it would be for other communities. They might be smaller towns as long as they have a downtown organization or a cultural district. But I think that there's a pretty broad popularity for it. And if you think about the spirit of what it's doing, since online sales have arguably, arguably caused uh, downtowns to struggle uh, over a sustained period of time. Um, this is taking some of the sales tax revenue from online sales and then channeling it back in downtowns again. So this is something to watch. Um, uh, it, it's, it's being uh, worked its way through the House and the Senate. We'll see where it leads. Um, but Downtown Vitality Act. So keep, keep your eyes on that one. We have our fingers crossed. And our state delegation um, is very actively involved in it. In fact, the Senate um, uh, version of it was co-sponsored by our Senator John Cronin. Um, and last but not least, Creative Cities. Many of you have heard of the Creative Cities designation that Mass Development gave Fitchburg. Um, this was after we concluded our TDI initiative. Um, it was competitively awarded. It's a two-year funding. We have just entered the second year of it, and it's to help us uh, strengthen and foster the creative economy in our city. And uh, we're funded for two years. We're entering our second year. There's the potential to get a third year of funding, depending on how we perform in year number two. So obviously, we want to really make the most of it, and that's some, something that we want to keep in mind. Devising sustainable approaches to broader engagement of the local population in events programming. This is something that is being worked um, on through the, uh, the work program of Creative Cities right now. And some of the entities that have been very active in this are um, the Main Street Studios, the New Views Art Stewards, In Town, and other groups as well. So I would say stay tuned if you haven't gotten involved in Creative Cities programs or projects or initiatives, there's certainly an opportunity to do so, but it has tremendous relevance for our downtown and um, we certainly wanna make the most of that while we have that type of support coming from Mass Development. Last but not least, and then I wanna open it up for any questions, um, just a quick reminder that um, the dining sector, we saw in a lot of that uh, survey data, um, different segments of our target market said, you know, they weren't happy with the, the, the selection of restaurants or the range of restaurant types. And we knew that we wanted to grow our dining sector anyway. So I'm pleased to report, at least looking at 2023, we have had four new restaurants that have opened in the downtown 
since the spring, since the spring of 2023. Uh, Rise and Grind at 805 Main, Dario's on Main at 655 Main, Popper's Pantry 695 Main, Mama Juana Restaurant at 423 Main. And of those four, three of the four have sit down service with wait staff. Now, it, it, it doesn't mean that all restaurants need to have that, but we know that we were having leakage of our local consumers going to other communities because we didn't have enough choices uh, when people wanted to have that experience of being served um, in a sit down way. So it's nice to see that we're already at least on our way, a lot more work to do, but we're on our way by having several new restaurants having already opened. And I'm pleased to report several more that are um, preparing to open right now as we speak. Uprise Baking Company at 150 Main, Tacos Don Juan, which will be at 356 Main, and Identity Coffee Lab within 35 Main. And that's the same building that will also have Fitchburg Public Market. And that is going to be a shared commercial kitchen, but also a cafe. So we have a few different food-related businesses that are getting ready to open. We've had some that have opened. And we know that we'll need to continue to promote and market the businesses that we have or the ones that will soon be here because we have a number of segments of our local consumer population that either are unaware or maybe not in the habit of coming downtown. And so I'm actually very encouraged uh, that we've got consumers out there. It's just a matter of making the most of them. And this report was intended to kind of open our eyes to that. So I guess I would like to open it up for any questions or comments. Thank you very much, Director Bohart. That was a, a great conversation. It's great to see the results of the study. I'd like to open up to my fellow uh, committee members. Do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I, I just uh, was looking, you know, you talked about Fitchburg State and trying to, to target Fitchburg State students. I, I'm wondering if it's, if it's more of a marketing issue or if it's, uh, what, what, what is the issue there exactly? That, how, how can we address it, uh, Mary Jo? You know, I think part of it, I mean, there's a few, it's a, it's a few things. Um, we realize that some of our biggest, best, most popular downtown events, when you think of some of the ones which are annual and they happen every single year and they bring out the largest turnouts, they tend to happen in the warmer months, which tend to be the months when Fitchburg State is not in session. What we don't yet have a large track record of are large events in our downtown during the autumn and the winter. Now, when you get into the, 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 the dead of winter, maybe some of them will have to be indoor events, and that's something we would have to, you know, recognize just based on weather, although sometimes communities do events that celebrate, you know, being out in, in the elements and so on, and we have, we have done a few things like that in recent years, but making sure that building the habit of them coming to our downtown I think is one thing, targeted marketing and, and trying to think through, meet the people where they are. If it's an age demographic that really is using um, social media or certainly web-based and, and personal devices uh, to communicate and find what they want and where they wanna go, then that's the means and the method that we need to use when thinking through how best to reach that segment. It's not something that we've done a lot of, and, and when I say we, I don't just mean the city. When you look at the various businesses in our downtown, a lot of them are small independent businesses. We're lucky that we have, because you know some, some people have a lot of chains, but we have a lot of very unique independent businesses. When you have independent businesses, they're often you know, doing many things, wearing many hats, and sometimes marketing is one of those things that's like the last thing. There's, there's the managing the staff and cooking the food and, and buying the goods and doing the books, and oh, there's marketing. And so we can be proactive, uh, reaching out one-on-one -on -one to the various businesses of the downtown to get a pulse check on what do they do currently, what kinds of consumers are they reaching, and would they appreciate or would they like any assistance trying to capture some of these markets that they're missing? They may not even realize what they're missing until they see it articulated in this way. But for those that would like to dig in and find, and I think a lot of them will, they, they just may need a little bit of assistance um, either technically or just time-wise, you know. And so um, I think that's a, that's a good next step for us to make sure that the businesses in the downtown understand the potential for consumers coming off of the university 
and uh, to what degree would they like assistance in capturing that? The, the, the other thing I, I wanted to ask about, you know, we, we see a lot of these, uh, these bar charts that where public safety at, in the evening is, is an issue. Now the City Council lately has been hearing that it, it, is, it isn't much of an issue anymore, but there's the perception of that issue. So how do we, how do we get that perception right. to go away, right. basically? And that's, that's a really good observation. Um, is this based on data? Yes, this is based on data. What type of data? How people feel. They fill out a survey, this is how I feel. And it may not equate with the exact kind of data that our police department has, which is calls for real things that really happen. That's a different type of data. But how they feel is affecting how they behave. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong, it almost doesn't matter. If they feel that way, it might be Im impeding them from coming to the downtown. So what we need to do, uh, particularly we saw a, a distinct difference between daytime and evening. So um, one thought, and I'm just throwing this out as an idea, is perhaps um, if uh, our police department is adding additional you know, foot patrols or whatever, it might be most helpful, at least at the point at we're at right now, if it was in the early evening rather than at, at noontime, if it, in, the, in the daytime people aren't having that same concern. So that's one thought. The other thought is, um, as some of the survey respondents talked about um, feeling, not lonely, but sort of a, when you're walking down a street and there's only one or two other people, there's a kind of a weird feeling because it's not heavily traveled, and so, so that in and of itself can make people feel less safe just because there, there, there aren't a lot of others out there with me. So, so part of our efforts adding to the sense of public safety is that whole notion of many sets of eyes. And when we go places, and we're uh, places that are far more urban than Fitchburg, when you have lots of people and many sets of eyes, people tend to feel pretty safe because even though there might be quite a mixture of folks all over the place, um, you're not one of the only ones on the sidewalk. And so, so I think that challenge of making sure that we have a lot more foot traffic, may, it may start with events, even though you know, ultimately we want it to happen just naturally, but sometimes it takes events to engage people and get them into the district where they start noticing what's here and then marketing to bring them back. Most of our events are during the day. We don't have many nighttime events. That's right. So, And you know what? Other communities, not, not all, but some, have done nighttime events. And, and, and I'm thinking of Lowell because they, they, they have all sorts of things that they, they've been doing. And, and um, you know, it, it, actually Salem, and obviously October in Salem is a little peculiar because that's a, a month long Halloween celebration. That's all at night, you know, pretty much. But we can do nighttime events too. We don't have a deep tradition of it yet, but um, that is something that we might want to think about. Now, getting back to time of the year, we don't want to miss out on those winter months when FSU is in session. Um, so possibly some of the things might be in different businesses. For example, um, people, uh, the, the survey responses, particularly from the FSU segment, live music, please, you know, they just wanted lots of, you know, music opportunities. So it doesn't always have to be a huge performance. It can be um, a, a few performers in, in a smaller setting, similar to what is going on at Dario's on Wednesday nights, for example. I saw a really nice photo posted by Eddie Troxler on social media last night. He's been doing these Wednesday evenings at Dario's, and he was joined by another uh, musician colleague that he knew, and I'm sure the diners loved it and so on. We could do something, uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's organized in such a way that there are multiple performers in different eateries all on the same night, and we do that in succession, and you know, there are ways Lovely. of doing things where it might be indoors in the colder months. It's okay, but I do think we might want to take the plunge and do an outdoor event in the winter too. We just have to think through what it is. Yeah. I would like to just amplify that idea that the, the best thing we can possibly do to combat that perception of, of safety issues is people, having people coming and going. I, I really want to echo that. that is the biggest thing we can do to make it feel alive, to make it feel safe, 
is just to have more people doing things, to have people exactly. living downtown, coming and going from apartments. And just, it feels completely different having the restaurants open yeah. across, across the street from us, to see people coming and going. When you drive down and see Dario's lit up and people are dining, when you, when you walk out of this building at 8.39 after a meeting, it, it feels completely different than when everything is closed up. Exactly. And, and, and there's no one around. Th exactly. That's when it starts to feel scary. And I think you're exactly right there. Well, well it's actually, it, it's not my own unique idea. Some of the respondents, when they were a answering, said, um, they, they said it almost had a lonely quality. Mm -hmm. They didn't mean they were lonely, but by what they meant was, I'm one of the only ones walking on the street, and that feels kind of odd. And then I think I'll put it in the orange rather than yellow because I kind of feel a little odd, you know? And, and so that's kind of what they were trying to say, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Other, other ideas? Um, I, I would welcome, and it doesn't have to be right now, but whether it's yourselves or folks watching at home, you know, feel free to send me an email, phone call. Uh, you almost have to chew and digest this, sleep on it, think about it, but there's a lot of potential for us to help our fabulous businesses that are already in the downtown or the ones that are about to open or thinking about coming to our downtown. We wanna make sure they can capture some of this consumer potential that I was actually quite excited to see how much potential exists that we haven't even, you know, taken advantage of yet. Yes, it's leakage, we wanna work on that, or yes, there's, you know, segments that are not, you know, yet being engaged in the district, but there's a tremendous potential. And the whole visitor slash tourist, wow. That will be a little bit trickier for us to figure out since two of the primary spots they're going, you know, are in our western end, but they're coming for an extended period of time. They tend to be staying for more than a day. Um, so perhaps through some wayfinding signage, through some promotions, marketing, events and things, um, we wanna try and fully capitalize on those out of town visitors because that, uh, that's a whole other type of consumer that could really be great for our businesses. If we could, if we could somehow locate a hotel in the downtown area, <laughs> we would be able to capture more of those yeah. people that are coming yeah. in to game on and to- Oh, sure. And, you know, sure. You know, I wonder so. if, uh, so I've heard anecdotally people say, oh, you know, the market's not good for a hotel. Nobody's gonna, you know, build a hotel here because, and this was sort of closer to the, the end of the pandemic when the hotels were still struggling. I wonder if it would be worth it for us to um, actually have a study done that shows that there is demand for a hotel here and then use that as we're trying to market for a hotel. I think I, that I've heard it would that be. because yeah. I mean yeah. it, it, we have these and it, it's not just game on it's also the Coolidge Park the, oh, the street yeah. hockey rinks we get oh, sure. we get visitors yeah. for these tournaments they have to they a lot of them have to stay out of town because exactly. they can't find lodging right. here in, in Fitchburg. Exactly. So. FSU parents. Yeah right. FSU exactly. parents when they come to visit. visit. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a huge potential for of course uh, for for uh, lodging I think right. in this in this area and the downtown would, I think would be a perfect location if we could Absolutely. find a, a spot. Absolutely. Well, we have a courthouse that we'll be selling soon. <laughs> <laughs> right for a hotel. Boutique hotel. <laughs> Boutique hotel. Yes. Yeah. Anything further? I, I think I'm all set. Thank you, Councillor. So I, I had one question. Um, when was the survey completed? There were a few different ones that went out. So the FSU one um, was done, I wanna say in January, February, I wanna say. And then the resident one was probably done at around that same time, but the resident one was open for a lot longer because it, it was, you know, there's a lot of people, it's a little harder. FSU is a bit of a captive audience. You have the students and the, and the university communicates with them regularly and they were extremely helpful. At, they understood what we were trying to achieve and so they were more than happy to use their communication platform with their students to, to make them aware of the survey. And so we got a very good response rate from both the, the staff and the students at FSU. The resident survey, more of a modest, um, I don't know, you know, it, was it a good cross section? It's hard to say. Um, people don't like doing surveys, <laughs> you know, so, the, so it's one of those things. We tried a few. We tried a few different uh, techniques and so on, but we got a reasonable. We got a reasonable number. And then the downtown employees. Um, what we did was we started with some of the larger employers, sort of the biggest bang for the buck, if you will. But then we also reached out to smaller ones that we knew and asked if they would uh, get some of their employees to answer. So it was a, a little bit of uh, a variety of different ways, but it occurred 
winter into spring. Okay. And then the analysis uh, and the report getting finalized was kind of spring into summer. And then it was kind of wrapped up by like early summer. I find that's very interesting because it's what we've seen since this, the surveys have been taken is we have the, the most recent restaurants opening downtown, including the three we can see from this building. Yep. And they've been, from what I can tell as a, as a customer and observer, Popular. tremendously successful. Popular. That um, if you go across the street to Parker's Pantry at lunch, it is packed. Yeah. You often yeah. have to wait for a table if you don't hit the time. And Rise and Grind is busy. And Rise and yeah. Grind is busy, and, yeah. and Dario's is open. And Mama Juana, although they've only been open about a month, they have a steady stream of diners, particularly in the dinner hour. Um, those who answered the surveys, Rise and Grind opened in March, and then the others came in succession after that. So when these surveys were being answered, none of those four things had opened. Mm -hmm. So that th those have opened since this survey had been done. And the majority of our dining options downtown, um, prior to, to particularly Papa's Pantry, Dario's, yes. and Mama Juana, are really sort of lunch, early, supper-focused yeah. kind of businesses. Yeah, we not... had a few. We, when Tacos Tequila and Zapata came, those became sit-down experiences yeah. in the evening hours. But you're right. A lot of them were more casual, uh, grab-and-go, morning and afternoon kind of mm -hmm. places. Yeah. So it, it's interesting that this survey identifies this tremendous uh, market and opportunity for these types of businesses. And then the businesses come, and it works. It's successful. Well, well you know and what? Yeah, I, I, the businesses were already making their preparations yes, to come yeah. before this survey was even envisioned. But, I'm, I'm not so, saying but, it's, but I mean, yeah. it is somewhat coincidental, but it does prove the point. That's my, yes, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm getting. I'm not saying the that this survey. Was awesome, though, no. They were already, you know, virtually open when the survey was wrapping up, but survey identified something. Oh, look, some came. Look, they're actually getting a lot of business. <laughs> I guess there is something to that, you know. So in looking at this, this estimates of leakage, do we have the potential to support a lot more? Is is uh, like we haven't used up our potential with these. No, we records. haven't. Yeah. What what I did notice, and I was just recollecting back to five years ago when we did the economic development strategic plan, and the, that was when leakage was first posed to us. Once again, dining dining leakage, and at that time, it was a much larger amount of leakage that was going out into other communities. I was relieved to see that it's now. Um, 25% rather than 60% uh, of the dining outside the home is still mm -hmm. leaking. Uh, not good, but, but I, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, if you go back five, six years ago, a heck of a lot more of it was leaking out. Once again, it's not that the local uh, consumers uh, thought ill of their city. It's just what they wanted on those particular evenings when out they were going. We didn't have. And so off they went to find whatever that was. And... Um, and I'd like to think that as we're starting to get a few different types of dining options that are unlike anything that was here before, hopefully that's filling um, a, a bit more of what people were seeking who were going elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the leakage number is reducing, but it still exists. And I should also add, you'll see it in the full report. I didn't want to belabor it in the slide deck. Retail leakage, um, when you start to get into big box, huge leakage we will never be able to yep. capture because you know where the big boxes are and they're in communities along the highway you know so so you know when people are looking for um warehouse superstores and stuff like that it's like you know that, that that's not the ship has sailed but for specialty retail specialty retail which believe it or not tremendous desire for that Usually the people want personalized attention. Mm -hmm. They want um, an experience where they're really interacting with the business owner. They want to touch things and so on. So um, we're never going to see dozens and dozens and dozens of retailers. But in a downtown that has a healthy dining sector, a lot of other entertainment and things to do type uses, having retail as sort of hidden gems and so on, that, that as a total mix I think is very reasonable presently. We have several retailers. Some of them have been a long time. A few are newer arrivals, and um, and that's fantastic. Um, it'll be nice if we could double or even triple that, but it has to happen gradually. Um, and and uh, some of them are destinations in their own right because they're so specialized, and that's fine. If someone comes because they want to go to that particular business, they and, and I talk to those retailers that have extremely specialized clientele. 
and I ask them uh, how far you know away, and, and they come from several communities away. Once they've come, they're probably going to go get a, a snack or something. So, so there's a lot of, once I'm here, I might as well patronize a few of the other things that are here. And that way, our downtown businesses can kind of cross-pollinate or share clientele. So it, it seems like listening to the discussion is sort of you can break our commercial opportunities down into to three buckets. The first biggest opportunity is places to eat. And, and we're, we're making progress there. We're opening restaurants. There's more in the works that are coming. And that's really a big draw to, to bring people in. It. Uh, it seems like the, the second bucket, it's a little smaller, is things to do. Entertainment, activities. Yes. People want to go and have fun. And that's one of the opportunities we have to, to work on. Yes. Um, I think it's, it's something that will, the, uh, the FSU theater block is, is one area long term where we can see growth mm -hmm. there. And we've seen that um, with one of the restaurant um, proposals um, that the El Toro, which has yes. recently purchased yes. the site, to move to, to downtown. They really want to incorporate music, um, and, music yeah. and entertainment yeah. into their business model there. Exactly. So I think that's, that's good. And, um, and the, the third one, which we just talked about, is really that retail opportunities. And I like that idea of sort of that specialty retail. Because the idea of uh, downtown being the place where you come down to Goodwin Shoe Store and buy your shoes, it's gone. And, and it's, it's not, not gonna, unique to Fitchburg. You couldn't find yeah. those almost anywhere anymore. So the world has changed quite a bit on that. Yes. yes. Um, but if you want to find a place where you get specialty collector sneakers, that mm -hmm. could be more of an or opportunity. Or customized bicycle or customized bicycle. You know, all sorts of things. So I, I think there are opportunities there. But I, th I think that is a, one of the, the tough ones to, to find that, that market niche to, to make it work. One thing that I've observed in talking to our existing specialty retailers is they all know each other mm -hmm. and they, they certainly collaborate, I'll call it informally. Maybe we can organize more formal ways to help kind of cross promote each, uh, them as a collective perhaps. But also they'd like more. In other words, they'd like more, uh, you know, retailers to, you know, to, to be, you know, so, so they're, you know, they like to be amongst their own and and so they're glad that the ones that are here are here they would like to see more mm -hmm. and and that's a, a constant that I hear from them well shopping can be an experience just like anything else yes yeah right. that's true and we have uh, many creative folks and artisans that are making things now and we will hopefully have more when Fitchburg Arts community is uh, uh, full and with uh, hopefully all artists and um, you know Hopefully there'll be a, that there'll be an opportunity to have some retail that it, highlights, showcases some of that um, handmade. And I think what, work. some of our most um, successful events have been these sort of makers market type. Yes, type artisan things. expos and, yes. and so on. Yeah. And, it, it, and I, I love that idea of seeing if we can encourage that to to get a, a permanent place where mm -hmm. where these local artists. And, and it work. might end up that we have more than one because. Like-minded folks that uh, you know, this type of uh, makers of things want to be you know together, and then this type you know, uh, we we probably have the ability to have a few different ones, mm -hmm. and um, as some of the creatives are monetizing whatever it is that is their um, their creative um, uh, talent, um, we want to have opportunities for their work their work to be showcased so that uh, people can see it other than just on the internet, mm -hmm. and um, and I think we're at a moment. In part due to Main Street Studios and some of the um, some of the um, work being done there, and also New View doing a lot of the one-on-one -on -one, uh, business counseling, um, not just with traditional brick-and-mortar businesses, but with creatives. And we, we can imagine how um, we'd really like to make uh, sure that creatives that are either already present or soon to be present in Fitchburg, if they wish to promote their wares in a more physical uh, space that, that we can uh, come up with a clever way for them to have that, even if it's not all by their lonesome. Maybe mm -hmm. it's with others. Mm -hmm. um, anything further, uh, Councilor Schultz and Fleming? Uh, I don't have anything further. Any closing statements or anything you want to you add? Know, I just want to reiterate what I said a little bit earlier, which is uh, whether it's you all um, um, on the committee or people watching at home or people that might view the recording of this particular presentation or read the report, if you have thoughts or ideas about it, you know, I encourage you to, you can shoot me an email, uh, phone call, get in touch and so on, because 
very interested to hear people's thoughts. A lot of what I presented that we learned from this particular consumer market study has different actions that could come out of it that we, we could do. And so if people have thoughts about what they think could be impactful, we'd love to hear it. So I just wanted to encourage everybody to get in touch with me if they have such ideas. And if they go to the city website and find the economic development page, your, yes. your email address will exactly. be there. Exactly, exactly. And like Marissa has her hand. Yes, and what we'll do is, oh, Marissa has a question. Yes, Council yes. Fleming. Actually responding to that um, ideas, I've actually spoken to a couple of people that said they think that not just retail, but if you put maybe um, get dentists down there or physicians and stuff, that that would bring more people downtown. And once they're there for those appointments, that they would venture out. Absolutely. So not necessarily all retail. Exactly. More, you know, Personal business. services and whether that's... Yeah. Um, you know, beauty, hair, medical, you know, when you come for an appointment, once you are finished with your appointment, if you're in a district, you're going to walk around a little bit, maybe get something to eat or look in a business or something like that. So you're absolutely right. We do, we do have some. My dentist is downtown. <laughs> you know, we do have some. That's good. Yeah, that's we, could good. Add, we could add more, sir. We could add more. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we will be uh, uh, convening downtown business owners to share this information directly with them and... Um, you know, have a conversation about that as well. But the information is available on our web page too if anybody sure. wants to I think read that's the great to, to reach out to the, the business owners to have this available when people contact you to, to look yeah. for sites. Absolutely. Also I think it'd be great to share it with um, the the new view business staff, Ray Belanger. Yes. And, and make sure that they have this information available as they're uh, consulting with uh, prospective uh, exactly. people who are, who are opening prospective businesses. Exactly. Thank you very much, and um, and I, I think that we learned a lot from this. It, it, it's rooted in data. These surveys are real data, but it's how people feel. And if a consumer feels a certain way, whether it's right or wrong almost doesn't matter. We need to work on that. So any of those bar charts that were in the orange or almost the red category. I don't think we had any in red, but we had some that were definitely in the orange category. Um, and we want them to be more in the green end of those, those spectrums. If people feel a certain way, that's informing us that something, an action of some sort needs to occur, whether it's better marketing what we have or, or uh, addressing uh, tidiness or safety or, or something of, of that nature. Yeah, and I think it's worthwhile emphasizing that with this report, we're not focused on what the grade is, we're focused on what the opportunity Correct. we have is. And that was the point of it, yes. was, um, you know, uh, it's to open our eyes and to maybe focus on where the needs are. Yes. Yeah. Great. Well, thank well, you very much. Well, thank you so yeah. much for the presentation. It was very Absolutely. enlightening to listen to, and, and I'm, I'm very encouraged by the opportunities we have for growth in our downtown and yeah. the city in general. And uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. If motion to adjourn. We have a motion. We have a second. Marisa? Well, I'll second it for the, the sake of, of moving things along, and so the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry, it wasn't unmuted. <laughs> <laughs>